mentality. I, I don't like any team I'm playing against. I don't right. care who it is. And uh, it just added more competitiveness to it because it seemed like, um, you know, they were our nemesis and we just couldn't get the job done against them. By the way, uh, Turk, I fact-checked you. Mark McGuire, 0 for 8 with six strikeouts against you. So you definitely just, you controlled him. Oh, you eight. I faced him more than eight times, really. Maybe baseball reference is wrong. You never know. But either way, it's still good. You didn't give up a hit to him. <laughs> well, I remember the reporters always talking about it. They're like, oh, you know, you're going to face McGuire this series? And I said, I don't want to talk about it. Because uh, the baseball guys are always listening. I, I get you. When you were in Chicago and we're talking to Turk Wendell, did you, what was your feel for Sammy Sosa? Because he was always a good slugger. You know, he's always a guy who could hit 35, 40 home runs. But obviously, after you leave, he puts together the 66 home run year. Him and McGuire have the chase. What was your sense for Sammy Sosa when you were a teammate of his? One of the worst teammates ever. Really? Why? He only cared about himself hitting home runs. He didn't care if we lost 20 to 1. If he hit a home run, he was happy. Are a lot of guys like that, or was that just kind of him being him? No, well, that was just Sosa being Sosa, I guess. I mean, one-on-one off the field, he was a good dude, and I, we went to a shooting range a couple times, but Sammy was just kind of all about Sammy. We go to the shooting range in Arizona, and they tell you, you know, no automatic, or no, you know, bang, 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 bang kind of thing shooting, and next thing you know, Sammy's just doing whatever he wants. So, I don't know. I think sometimes some players get so used to people – uh, bowing down to him, giving them everything they want. They just think they can do whatever they want. And uh, he took that to the next level. So how would that happen? Like after you guys would lose a game, if he had a home run, he'd be in a jolly mood. But if you guys won and he had an 0 for 5 day, he would be all ticked off. Is that what it would be like? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it got so bad after I had left that uh, – he was in the clubhouse playing music and stuff after I guess they lost. And I think it was Kerry Wood just beat the absolute snot out of his, his uh, stereo system, <laughs> which was Sammy's. Right. Wow. That's crazy. We talked yeah, to Tur- it's yeah. sad because he was talented, but, you know, we did see his true athletic ability uh, after they started testing the steroids. He went from hitting 60 home runs, I think, to 12 or 14 with the with – was it Baltimore? And then I think, you know, he's out of the game. Would it, did you think he was using when you were there? I know it was 97, so it's a year before, but well, did you get a you sense? Know, there's a lot of speculations to stuff like that when you play with some guys, but I never actually seen it um, firsthand. But, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to say something like, oh, yeah, we won today because Sammy hit three home runs and he's in the middle of a cycle? Right. <laughs> you know, you can't do that. You can't throw your teammates out under the bus like that. And I probably shouldn't even talk about it. Yeah. Facts are facts. Yeah. He, he, I don't think he's ever admitted it, though. I don't think Sammy Sosa's ever publicly said he did steroids. He no. He kind of beats it around, no, around the bush with it. None of those guys will ever admit it for that fact. For fact is, of the matter. Is that, you know, when you're when you're playing for the Mets in the late 90s and you guys are obviously, you know, competing with the Braves, competing with all these teams, we now know, hey, a lot of guys were using. We now know that. But was that something that was talked about? Did you even care about it? Did you speculate about it? What was that oh, kind of atmosphere like? Oh, we talked about it and speculated about it. And, you know, I sat back and looked at my career afterwards and said, gee whiz, I was better than I thought, trying to get guys out on steroids and phetamines using cork bats. Um, but I remember in Philadelphia, I think it was 2003, sitting in the bullpen and we kind of speculated. I think it was out of the 25 guys on the roster that maybe 18 guys had, had done it or at least had done it wow. that we thought. Obviously, there's no proof of that. But, sure, sure. Um, I just, uh, you know, it's just sad to think that some of these guys, their lives would be cut short because they cheated that way. Because, you know, and that's the one thing with McGuire when he admitted steroids. You know, I would have liked the reporter that interviewed him just talk about how these ill effects are on your body today so that kids can be you know, warned about that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And who knows? I mean, there's some people that swear if you do it the right way that it's great for you. So I'm just uh, I'm just an all-natural guy, and that's just my belief. Was there ever an urge when you guys are speculating that like 18 out of 25 guys are using something that you would want to use something or not even use steroids but scuff the baseball, nope. try to get your edge back? Uh, 
No, but I can honestly say that I, I guess technically in the, in the eyes of baseball, I cheated every time I took the mound. I never went on the field without, without some pine tar in my glove just to get a little bit better grip on the ball. But a lot of the hitters will tell you, I'd rather you know where the ball's going than not know where it's going. Right. right. And I think that if the hitter can use a foreign substance to get a better grip on the bat, why can't the pitcher use the same foreign substance to get a better grip on the ball? Is that all it would do, just give you a better grip, or would it make the ball yeah, move in any no. kind of way? Nope, it just gives you a better grip. Okay. Yeah, you and know what is... that's more uh, prevalent when you're pitching in places like Arizona and Colorado because right. the air is so dry, and that's why the breaking balls don't break as well because you can't get a good grip to spin it, to snap it. Yeah. I, th- I think the most fans, like the, the grip thing doesn't... I don't think we look at it as cheating. I think when guys would scuff the baseball and they'd get it to move in such an unnatural way, that would probably be more on the line of cheating. And you never tried anything like that? No, my ball moved a lot, and it... it, it uh, I joked around throwing a Vaseline ball, and I think I threw actually six in, in an actual game in the big leagues. But I, I would laugh so much because it moved so much that I, I couldn't be focused because it was hysterical how much it moved. That's funny. We're talking to uh, Turk Wendell, the former New York Met. Yeah, he's a former Cub, but we, you're, you're the former Met in our eyes here in New York City. What do you think of the, the sign stealing stuff then that that happened to the Astros? Was there sign stealing going on from what you knew in the late nineties when you played? Uh, sometimes people did things with cameras in center field. There would be three cameras, and they uh, indicate if the camera on the right side that meant the pitch was coming on the right side, so the batters could pick that kind of thing up in certain ballparks. I think I heard more about it in places like Cleveland or Chicago White Sox, but. I mean, you play the game on the field, that's the way I look at it. And if you can pick up signs and do that stuff and relay it to the batter somehow. But when you throw technology into the game and putting iPads in the dugout and all that, I just don't see the need for it. You're out there for two or three hours, you can't play without an iPad? (laughs) It doesn't make sense to me. You're opening the door for cheating by by allowing that kind of stuff. I don't think there's any place in the game for any technology at all in the dugouts. (laughs) That, that may be where they're headed to, Turk, because I think they realize that any kind of technology could give an edge that maybe they're just going to ban everything and, and say well, that's the Well, I don't know way. why. What's the, what's the point? I mean, we have meetings for sometimes an hour and a half to two hours before the series or before a game going over hitters and stuff like that, and there's pamphlets that we get before every series that are two to three inches thick. With It's every pitch this guy's ever seen in the big leagues. Uh, you know, every OO fastball, curveball, change up everything day night turf field grass field you name it the statistics are there but i'd always joke around saying good lord we've got all this technology all these statistics but you still play the same damn game that uh seven-year-old kids play you throw it you hit it you catch it <laughs> yes yeah now you're right and and you can't lose sight of the fact if i'm a slider guy and this guy's got slider bat speed so what am i going to do in a in a crucial situation in the game i come in and throw my second best pitch because this guy can hit uh, a slider. Or if I'm a guy that throws 100 miles an hour and this guy's a fastball hitter, heck, I'd tell him, here it comes. If you can hit it, great. You still got to hit it. Yeah. No, you're right. We're talking to Turk Wendell. Let me bring up uh, a bad moment. It's painful for me to bring up. Game one, 2000 <laughs> World Series, Jose Vizcaino. You just got a big out because his base is loaded to this first and third one out, and you got a foul pop-up. And so I'm thinking, oh, my God, Turk's going to get through this inning and we're going to continue on. And I think it was the first pitch to Jose Vizcaino. Take me back to the moment. What's going through your mind and, you know, everything about that? that well, moment. I don't think it was the first pitch, but uh, I, I, could don't be wrong. Quite, I, quite, I don't quite remember it so much. I just remember not having much left in the tank because I warmed up six times before I actually got in that extra inning game. Oh, and I got out of the jam in the inning prior getting Glenn Allen Hill to pop up. That's right. Uh, well, I think with first and second or base a lot, I don't even know what the situation was. But I'm just super competitive. And, you know, I always try to teach kids now play smarter, not harder. And, of course, I didn't want to be classified as a wuss, but I probably, looking back, should have told Valentine, hey, look, I'm pretty much shot right now. If mm. we want to win this game, you better put someone fresh in there. But, you know, I don't want to come out. It's the first game of the World Series. And, 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 and then looking back, too, you know, it's the first game of the World Series. So I'm called to warm up to get ready to face so-and-so so you're really amped up and, and you're not going to go out there half cock so to speak you got to get ready to get you know get this guy out 
whatever, you know, the face of the next guy or something. That's the hardest part about being a reliever. It's the up and downs, uh, warming up, sitting down, warming up, sitting down that t- takes more of a taxi and toll on your arm than just pitching every day. Yeah. I was going to tell you, you know, I- I'm remembering back how many guys Bobby used in that game because obviously Benitez blew it in the ninth inning. At that point, I think most Mutt fans probably trusted a tired you over anybody else that would have come into that game. So <laughs> well, I still would have trusted you to get that out. I, gotta tell I you. appreciate that. <laughs> and, you know, it's sad that Armando's kind of got docked as a guy that couldn't pitch the big game because he had a great career and he was a great, great athlete, competitor, and, you know, just a great friend of mine too. But, um, you know, he, he pitched well. It just it seemed like he struggled sometimes. Maybe it's against the Yankees well, too. And look, that's look. them maybe from back in his Baltimore days when they had that big brawl. I'll be I'll be honest with you. Armando may be a great guy. I don't have anything personal against him. And the reason I think he has that bad rap amongst me and Med fans is because it's just true. He blew a lot of big games for this team. Yeah. Even games you guys won. Let's let's go back to that Giants game when JT Snow at the game tying three run home run. He blew it. Now luckily, Jay Payton I think got the game winning hit. And Johnny Franco struck out Bond, so Mets win the game. But Armando blew that game. So yeah, that, that's the that's the reason he takes heat because he blew a lot of huge games. And game one was a killer. I mean, if you guys win that game, do you think you win the World Series? Well, anybody can say yes. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> played Monday morning quarterback, but I think that we got a good momentum going in our favor. That's for sure. What was that week and a half like playing a World Series against the New York Yankees? Uh, it was pretty awesome. It was very surreal. And it was, um, for me, the only time I really ever got to relax during that whole week was when the game started. (laughs) Sounds kind of weird. I know, but there was just so much going on and so many people and celebrities coming in out of the clubhouse. Um, and it it was just kind of relaxing that, okay, now the game started and nothing else can interfere with anything. We can just relax and watch the game and and see what happens. So they're doing a documentary tomorrow night about Sosa McGuire home run chase. Will you not watch because Sosa was such a bad teammate, or are you interested in watching that? Uh, I probably wouldn't watch it anyway. I just I have other things to do. I'm not. I, I watch baseball games, but uh, I got you. <laughs> you know, I don't really feel a need to be glued to the TV to watch that. All right, fair enough. Fair I mean. Enough. <laughs> Yeah, it was great for baseball at the time, with those guys doing what they did. And, and you know what? They still – you can do all the cheating or steroids or drugs you want. You still have to hit the baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is an amazing feat in itself, and people claim it's the hardest thing to do in sports. So that in itself is, is pretty awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't see a need to watch – I mean, I basically kind of lived it, so I don't need to watch it. For no, me. fair enough. Fair enough. And I would, I would actually tell guys um, – <laughs> no knock on reporters because a lot of them are good you're good or great people and some of them are very good friends of mine but i would always say uh why do you need to read the newspaper the next day i said you know you're either going to read it to feel good about yourself or feel um, bad about yourself or even more bad than you do you know how you played you played the game so why do you need to read it and read how someone else saw it through their eyes that makes sense do you watch baseball with a rooting interest when it's actually on? Obviously, we have no baseball now, but do oh, you yeah, find yourself absolutely. watching? I, I, I'm a Mets fan and a Red Sox fan. Oh, so you've stayed, loyal, you've stayed loyal to the Red Sox through all these years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't, you can't take away your childhood. No, I get it. So if the Mets play the Red Sox in the World Series, who are you rooting for? Oh, that'd be a tough call. <laughs> well, you better answer uh, it, man. Let's hear it. Well, I guess I would actually probably want the Mets to win because they haven't won in a long time. The there you the go. They haven't won a lot. There you go. The Red Sox have won plenty. Enough of them. Yeah, as long as the Yankees don't win, we're good. <laughs> there you go. Turk, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for popping on. All right, y'all have a good one.